Does the iron from your well water stain your fixtures, tile, and grout? Awful, isn't it? That brown staining is horrible if you've got colored fixtures, but if you've got white fixtures, they won't be white for long. And did you know that iron from your well water also clogs your pipes? In this video, I'm going to show you the cheapest and best ways to get rid of iron from your well water for your family, starting right now. Hi, I'm Gary the Water Guy, and I simplify water filtration to help you conquer crappy water for your family. If the well water at your home cottage or cabin has iron in it, this video is definitely for you. I'm going to show you how to tell for sure if it actually is iron and what you can do about it. Iron from well water can be removed a number of different ways. I'll explain each of the methods to you, I'll explain the pros and cons, and that way you can make a decision for which one is best for your family. Typically, brown staining from water can be caused by a couple of different things, iron or it could be tannins. Now, you need to make sure what's causing that staining in your water. So, the, the best way to do that is to have the water tested. Now, you can send the water out to a lab and have that lab test for the iron content in your water. Or, you can actually mail us a sample of your water and we can test it for you. I'll put the address in the description down below where you would ma mail it. We don't charge for that. Or, there's a couple of simple tests that you can do at home. So the first step is fairly simple. Just grab a white styrofoam cup, let the cold water run at your kitchen faucet, and fill the cup about three quarters full. Have a look at it. Is there any color to the water? If there is, it might be iron or it might be tannins. But if there's no color to the water, just set it aside uh, for an hour or two hours and have a look at it again. If it now has color in the water, that color is being caused by iron and you definitely have iron. So if your water in the first test came out of the faucet with color right away, then you need to move on to the second test, which involves two styrofoam cups. So you're going to fill both of them about three quarters full with your water. And then one of the cups, you're going to grab this product here. Um, this is uh, Rust Out. There's a, a few different brands of this product. Uh, it's available on our e-commerce site. I'll put a link in the description down below where you can order this. And you're going to put a teaspoon of that into one of these cups. And you're going to stir it up and you're going to let it sit for, oh, about a uh, couple minutes until it clears. And then if it clears, if it removes all of the color from your water, then that tells you you have iron in your water and, uh, and you need to get rid of it. So why do you need two cups? Is because you're just doing a comparison before and after the iron removal chemical to, to just to make sure that there really is a difference. If after you use the rust out and it hasn't taken the color out of the water, then you've got tannins in your water. That color is not being caused by iron. I've got a great video that talks about that. I'll put a link in the description down below. You can definitely check that out to learn how to get rid of the tannins from your water. So there's three kinds of iron that we typically deal with from well water. The first is ferrous iron or clear water iron. So that's when the water flows out of your faucet, has no color whatsoever, as you saw in the white cup. And then when you let it sit, it turns color because the air oxidizes the iron out of the water. The next one is ferric iron. So ferric iron is um, iron that's been partially oxidized out of the water. So as the water comes out of your faucet, it has that rusty color. But when you use that rust out chemical in it, it totally took all the color away. And the third kind is bacterial iron. So bacterial iron produces a slime at the water line. So you can see that in your toilet, uh, like I say, at the water line. Or when you remove the lid off the tank at the back, you'll see a slime floating on top of the water. All right, so we know that you have iron in your well water, so how do we get rid of it for your family? So there's a number of different ways. I'll go through each method from the least costly or the cheapest up to the most expensive, but along the way, I'll explain the pros and cons of each one, and I'll also explain the, the, the best application for each one of those filters so you can make the best choice for your family. So a simple sediment filter like this, uh, this one here is a good choice. Now this is a fairly large one. This is a 20 inch big blue. If you have a small, um, cottage or cabin um, with very little water usage, maybe one or two people there just on the odd weekend. That You could go with a smaller 10 inch slimline size. Now you'd want to go with a fairly fine one like a one micron filter, something like that to capture as much of the iron as you can. Now if you have a lot of iron, you'll barely notice any difference going this route. It does remove iron. You can definitely uh, um, confirm that for yourself because when you're go to change the filter, you'll see that it's uh, quite rusty colored. And um, so it has been removing some iron. Will it be enough for your family? Probably not. Um, but the beauty is there's no backwash involved. You don't need a lot of water. It's super easy to winterize at the end of the season. Um, so it's definitely a good place to start. 
So the next cheapest way to remove iron is by something that you may already have, and that is a water softener. So a water softener like this one here removes iron, uh, typically up to about 0.5 parts per million of iron. It can handle no problem. If you start getting higher than that, then you need to use a product, something like this, this ResCare. Um, and what that does, it cleans the media inside because what happens is that iron will foul the media inside the water softener. So you have to constantly keep using a product like uh, ResCare. The other thing with uh, using a water softener to remove iron, you also have to compensate in the settings in the water softener for that iron. For example, if you have one part per million of iron and you have uh, 10 grains per gallon of hardness, then you would actually set the hardness on the water softener of about 15 to 17, because for each one part per million of iron, you have to um, compensate in the settings for five grains per gallon of hardness. So what that means is the water softener is going to use more salt than it, uh, than it does if it's just uh, getting rid of the hardness from your water. But if you already own the water softener, adding the res care, et cetera, is not going to be a, 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 it's not going to be a big extra expense. You could also go with a dedicated iron removal filter cartridge like this one here. So what they do is they remove iron from your water, both ferric and ferrous iron, and uh, they, the water just flows through and it removes the iron. Now they do recommend that you should have a sediment filter before this and you should have a carbon filter after for it to work properly. Now these filters are quite expensive and by the time you add on the carbon filter and the sediment filter and the three 20 inch big blue filter housings, it can get fairly expensive, but you still have to keep replacing these on an ongoing basis. So again, for a cottage or a cabin, that kind of a scenario, they're pretty good. You don't need to require any backwash water. So if, if you don't have a lot of water coming from your, from your well, it's uh, definitely an alternative. It's super easy to winterize. So again, uh, for a cottage or cabin, that's often an important point. All right, so let's check the specifications of that filter cartridge. So as you can see, when you've got uh, three parts per million of iron, um, 26,000 gallons for four people, you're looking at about 104 days. So what that means is you'd have to replace that uh, filter cartridge about every three months. So as you can see, it does get expensive fairly quickly and the recommended operating conditions. So this is important, is that the pH has to be greater than 7.0. So if your pH is 6.5 or 6.2 or something like that, that cartridge is not going to work. And I should say that's fairly common for iron removal filters is the pH is fairly important. So make sure you consider that if you're having your water tested for iron, also have it tested for pH. Um, manganese has to be below one part per million and the iron, it can only handle up to three parts per million. Iron bacteria, that slime we talked about earlier, can't be in the water. It won't work with that cartridge. And the hydrogen sulfide, there has, again, there has to be none, no hydrogen sulfide, that rotten egg smell in your water for that cartridge to work. We have a full range of iron filters on our e-commerce store, waterestore.com. I'll put a link in the description down below. Check it out. So the next method of removing iron from your water is an air over media iron sulfur filter. Now the beauty of these systems are they're totally chemical free and there's no filter cartridges to replace. So this is the system here. So definitely this is not the cheapest uh, system, the cheapest way to go, but often this is the only way that you can go to properly solve the problem for your family, especially if it's a year round home where you have a family of two, three, four or five people living there year round. This is more the solution that you're going to ultimately end up with. And basically, there's a few different models. There's an FOC, so if you have lower amounts of iron, but you've got quite a bit of sulfur, if you've got uh, quite a bit of iron, but very little sulfur or none, FOB is the best choice, or the FOK if you've got high sulfur and high iron. So the great systems, basically how they work is you create a big air bubble at the top of the tank, your water sprayed through that air bubble, it oxidizes the sulfur, sorry, the iron and the sulfur, if you have any, out of the water, traps it inside, and then it backwashes every three days. So again, the beauty of it is there's no chemicals to add, there's no filters to change, you just set it and forget it. So another method of removing iron from your water is ozone. Ozone's a gas that's uh, injected. So I've seen systems where there's an ozone generator that's added onto this kind of a system. So instead of sucking in air, it sucks in the ozone. I've also seen standalone ozone systems. And basically how they work is they inject ozone into the water, it oxidizes the iron out of the water and then it traps it. So 
Though these systems we're talking quite a bit more money when you get into the ozone systems. Personally, I don't like the ones that have the ozone generator on top of here. It's because the ozone is not compatible with the parts that are inside this, this valve. So what happens is they're, you're, they're gonna, it's going to be breaking down the parts inside here as time goes by. And uh, so because of that, I don't like it. The other big problem with the ozone generators that are added onto the side here, they don't last very long and then you need to replace them. And believe me, they are very expensive. Similar problem with the, um, with the ozone system by itself. The ozone generator adds uh, ozone to your water, oxidizes the iron out of the water, but then it has to be trapped somewhere. So now you need a backwashable valve, something like this, or backwashable tank, something like this, that traps that oxidized um, iron out of the water, holds it in place, and then backwashes to flush it out. So I have heard mixed reviews about using ozone from getting rid of iron bacteria from your water. Um, some say it works, some say it doesn't. I don't know, but what I have heard is a chemical injection does work best for, for getting rid of that iron bacteria. So chemical injection is exactly as it sounds. A chemical is injected into your water. It's a powerful oxidizer. Typically uh, chlorine is used or hydrogen peroxide to oxidize that iron out of the water and then you need some contact time, so the water flows into a storage tank, usually about a 100 gallon tank that the water goes through to give you that contact time for that oxidizer to fully work. Then from there, it goes to another tank, another backwashable filter, something like this, that uh, has a neck sand or some media that um, uh, removes what's been oxidized out of the water, holds it into place so it can be backwashed every three or four days. And then from there it goes to another backwashable filter that has carbon in it. And, uh, and what that does, it removes the chemical from the water, like I say, the chlorine from the water, and then it goes on to your whole household. So those are definitely the most expensive systems, the chemical injection systems. Again, I don't like them very much. Um, because they're very high maintenance. There's always uh, parts that need to be replaced because the, the chemicals are very harsh. So, uh, so I don't really prefer those systems, but when it comes to removing iron bacteria, that's definitely the best way to go. So, what's the cheapest way to get rid of iron from your well water for your family? Well, you can definitely try the one micron sediment filter, see how that works. Super small investment to give it a try. If that's not working, you may already be getting rid of it for, with um, your water softener. Make sure you use that ResCare to keep the media clean, to keep that water softener working. If you've got sulfur in your water, you need an air over media, iron sulfur filter like one of these. With iron bacteria, there's no choice. You have to go with the chemical injection route. If you're looking for some more information about iron filters and uh, water filtration in general, click over here for my next video and I'll see you there.